Since I last spoke to you guys, I think the um, I miscounted. We had 95 reps on Saturday. I mean, on Friday last week. So, my bad. Um, didn't feel like that many. But if you include all the special teams, it's way way over that. So, 95 offense and defensive reps. But um, looking at uh, our prep now, we love the way our guys have moved past uh, fall camp. Now focusing on our first op opponent, which is Navy, and. Had really good practices so far. Had a really good practice today with the defensive side, and, and um, you know, getting great looks from our scout team and stuff. So, offensively, um, I think they, you know, they have to get used to what Navy does defensively, which is a, a, a lot of high, um, high amount of pressure and different types of pressures. And so, uh, now we've made the move um, directly to scout teams and have moved over to just prepping for the game and trying to get some extra work at it and get some extra meeting time. So that's uh, that's been our focus and. Uh, uh, ready to go. We'll, we'll keep trying to um, get everything ready, and hopefully, uh, you know, what 13 days away, hopefully we can get this done. Okay, let's go, Jared, and then Norma. Hey, Kalani. So, Jared, I wanted to ask about the um, defensive side when you're going up against the triple option. There always seems to be an emphasis on both finding discipline, being disciplined, being in the right spot, as well as being disruptive. Because if you let them go where they want to go, they're going to gain five yards a pop. How do you how do you address that as you prepare for this upcoming game? Well, I think the key for us is, is limiting the big plays, and that's what uh, you know. I think you look at the the teams that run this type of offense. They're they're, they love just getting yards and they'll grind it out and do these long drives, but we're going to have to just be better than them on those long drives. I don't think you can really sell out and try to get too disruptive because uh, they've seen it all, you know what I mean? So uh, what they do is that just having the quarterback be not just a, a viable running back, but also uh, the key part of it is a, is a huge – that's a big difference compared to what everyone else does. And so it allows you to it, – it makes you have to play that quarterback like a regular player and not just – a guy that you don't have to cover, you know what I mean. So if you're looking at the scheme, it just it just they spread the field, but they use all they utilize all their their um, the skill, and then they focus on toughness and discipline. So if you're uh, finding ways to be disruptive, usually disruptive and discipline is is a uh, is uh, doesn't really go well together, you know what I mean. And so for us, it'd be really controlled and disciplined, but really physical and tough. So we're looking forward to the matchup. I think. Um, you know, just getting used to it is something that's different, and unique. We haven't seen it in, in a number of years here at BYU, but um, a lot of the guys kind of have to go back to when they played it against it in high school or played with it in high school. We have to just really teach them the rules on the offensive side. It's, it's letting them know what the offense is thinking and what they're trying to get done when you go on the option or, or lead option or all the different looks that they may do with the speed sweeps and things like that. So uh, they do a good job at varying the play, play selection. For us, we just have to be really sound and, and focus on being physical and and being great tacklers, limiting the big plays, I think is going to be the key for us. Not giving up the, you know, it's not just the run game, but you know, you miss tackles, <clears throat> they can turn that into a big play and big touchdown run. Uh, but if you give up and you're not disciplined with your eyes, you give up a big pass. Uh, that's what they focus on. They're going to find ways and test everyone, all 11 guys on the field, uh, with their discipline and try to make big plays off of that. And we can't allow that to happen. And usually comes down to fundamentals and technique. Norma, and then uh, Mitch Harper. Hey, Coach, how are you doing? What's up, Norma? Um, so I, I have a feeling you're going to tell me this is a Tom Homo question. Okay. <laughs> uh, now that class has started over again, has there been any, I guess, um, problem, ish, like issues stand out that you're like, we have to reevaluate our bubble or we have to do things differently? Um, and how will you maintain your bubble uh, with visiting teams this season? Yeah, that's probably a mixture of our sports medicine department and our administration. But I know one thing, we, we continue to educate our players and it changes. It's just not like we're doing the same things now that we did a month ago or, or two weeks ago. You know, we're we're always trying to evolve and, and trying to find ways to stay on top of everything. And whether that means with a, with a certain type of test that we have out there or, you know, keep, keep promoting the different uh, resources that we have to us, like equipment and things like that, that keep us. I think the the key for us is the social distancing and trying to educate our players uh, when they're not here how to how to take care of themselves and when they're at home or when they're with their families how to be safe and and be mindful of others. So that's we, the focus is still the same. We just just keep working. There's a lot of technology from the school and things that are helping us through the screening process and through the testing and everything. 
And what about for opposing teams coming to visit? Yeah, that's not my in my area of expertise. I'm worried about what they're trying to run offensively and defensively and special teams wise. Hey Kalani, now that fall camp's over and you've now shifted into Navy week, what are you and the offensive staff's decision in regards to the starting quarterback job? Yeah, they're close. They're close to naming one. So I, I'll uh, when we're ready to do it, we'll have it. We'll have it out there. But um, I think the guys have done a pretty good job. I, I feel really good about uh, you know four quarterbacks that can play for us right now. So um, yeah, I'll just I'll leave it up to that. I'm curious too, Kalani. What's the strength of your defense? You feel right now heading into the season? We have a lot of experience, a lot of different places, and 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 that's a, I think in all all the uh, all all positions, you know. And we uh, I, I like our backers, and I'm a little bit biased because I spend a lot of time with them. But uh, I think you know, looking at that the experience that we have at safety and and corner, and uh, I, I like the way these guys work. So I'm just going with that. And I know when we get to this moment of of you know, uh, when the when we're going live and everything, I just like the way that they've reacted to the the tough situations we put them in, and so and I know Navy will do some things that that are way faster than what we can simulate here. But I really believe in these guys, and, and I think that the leadership on the team has been a, a big key on the defensive side. Okay, let's go, Sean, and then Jacob Hatch. Hey, Coach. Sorry, I had to turn on my uh, microphone there. I'm still learning the Zoom thing. <laughs> um, but as you're uh, as as we're as you're talking about getting ready for Navy and, and prepping for Navy and that kind of thing, can you give us just a tiny peek into kind of the the scout team's responsibility with that unique Navy option? Like, is are you bringing over a lot of like cornerbacks to play wide receiver, or even quarterback, or that kind of thing? Does it just look so much different just because? Navy is so much different, I guess. Yeah, just I mean, it's it's the style, the cut blocks, and all that we have to get used to. And and uh, you know, we had a, a good a good session of that today, and, and a good, I mean, a lot of plays today where, you know, today is one of the days where the the D line, I mean, the defensive players and the scout team were in full pads, and and the offense and scout defense were in, you know, in in, in shells. But today we're gonna, it's a different type of practices for the defense than it is for the offense. So. Uh, we, we really want to um, have those guys getting used to taking on cut blocks, taking on the, the low pad level that the old line fire out with, looking at the way that these guys run their routes and uh, the type of play action passes that they have. So um, we have to we have to be creative with the different pers personnel that we use on the scout offense to give us the speed, the look that we want. So yeah, and we've even done that with a, we've we've done some crossover where we've had, you know second string guys get out there and play on the slot backs and on the wing and, and receiver for us so uh, yeah we've we've utilized all that to try to get a faster look at it it's it's going to be way faster than even what we're doing now but it, we can try to get it as, as as fast as possible and get the simulated as best as we can hey jake and then matt Kalani, you've talked about the fact that the triple option is such a unique offense, but Navy is apparently named a what was it, a third string quarterback, a senior as their starting quarterback. Going into a game like this, facing off against a new quarterback, does it have an element of surprise having a new quarterback in that offense, or is it something you can prepare for, knowing that hey, this is the triple option? Well, I think they they utilized even last year was a little bit different, you know, and they found something that was pretty successful for them. But I think that. Uh, their quarterback that they had there got drafted, you know, and, and he was a, I think he's playing receiver for the Dolphins now. But they, they have, they're going to put a quality person in that position. It doesn't really matter what string they were last year to this year. They're, they're, Coach Nimatololo will have the team ready. I, I, that staff is a good staff. They'll, they'll have their guys ready and, and trained and, and disciplined. And so we're not really worried about what number shows up behind center. We're just worried about uh, being sh sure that we are in the right spot and that we're disciplined ourselves and to match their toughness. That's that's going to be our, our focus. And uh, it's an honor for us to play against these guys and to play football, you know. So I think the preparation has been really, really good for us. But I, I don't think uh, for us, we and it, it being so unique, um, we have to be able to, to, to practice it and, and do all the cut blocks and, and guys got to get banged up. We, we're going to go into this game a little bruised up, but that's okay. They'll heal. Kalani, uh, upon film review, who stood out to you from the final uh, full camp scrimmage? 
oh man, you're just throwing that out there like I'm gonna name one out of 123 guys. That's putting me under pressure. <laughs> I thought the snapper, kicker, and holder were great. So, <laughs> um, I don't know. The guys did well. I, 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 that seems like so long ago. That was three, three practices ago. So yeah, I have a hard time even remembering that day. So uh, every day for me has been Groundhog's Day, just straight football and and work until you know until we get things done here in the facility. But I, I I couldn't name the guys. I think if you look at our players, the guys are doing good. I I think for us being so f as physical as we've been this camp and even right now during practices, I've been really pleased with the way the guys are taking care of themselves and take care of their bodies. So if I were to say one thing about the players, I, I love the fact that they're spending time together and watching a lot of film and becoming a lot more assignment sound because it's starting to show on the field, you know, uh, not as many mistakes. And now we're focusing on the, on the, the, the fundamentals technique part of the game. Okay, let's go, Jay, and then Shep. Hey, Kalani, I came in a little late. I was on another Zoom call, so if this has been asked, I apologize. But with the personnel you have at running back, are you looking to have a workhorse back from this group, or will it be by committee, or just kind of what do you see based on the talent you have there? Um, without giving too much about our, our game planning and scheme and stuff, I think you have backs that can do a lot of different things, and, and – you know, we have certain backs that, are, that do good things out of the backfield, in, including blocking and catching the ball. And so I think utilizing those guys, I think you're going to see a bunch of different personnel groups on the field and a lot of different, uh, you're going to utilize all the skill we have. So it's not going to be like we're just going to play with the same 11 guys. You know, we, we have a lot of talent, and I expect our offense to use them all to score points. And so, yeah, you, you'll, you'll probably see a good number of running backs that are on the field and, and uh, different personnel sets that, that maybe we haven't done much of in the past does when that help you, say, you yeah when you say utilize your all the talent do you foresee maybe jaron hall or even baylor or some of the other quarterbacks even soul j seeing a, a some playing time at a different position you never know jay you never know that's like are you trying to give navy everything right now like, <laughs> like you might as well say do you have any trick plays up your sleeve to use for this game no i i I mean, every, it, when you have this 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 type of situation that we have on on, on offense, and uh, I think you, you utilize them all. You know, they're, they're there for a reason, and, and try to have everybody have a role. You know, and, and maybe someone's a little bit younger and inexperienced, but they can have a role in, in this team. They can have a, a a package that will put us in a situation where it makes teams have to defend us, and and uh, you know, we try to defend not just eleven on the field, but the op uh, uh, the options that we have as well. You know. With, Looking at the the thirty guys that we can put on the field, so I think that's going to be key for us, and and putting them the right way and getting the work done. I think we've got we have a lot of work already in place. Now it's time to start, um, you know, kind of screwing down what we want to focus on in this game against against Navy and what's going to give us the best uh, um, chance to win. That's that's what we're going to focus on. We've done a whole bunch of different things, and this is kind of with all our schemes. Now we have to just kind of focus on what's going to be a good matchup for us and what we think we can get the, the advantage. Hey, Shep. Kalani, well, since you uh, you mentioned kicker a second ago, where do things stand with that position? How how has that position come along? And then maybe big picture, overall special teams, what type of weapon do you think that can be for this team this year? Yeah, I feel like we have, a, um, you know, Jake Olderoid will be our place kicker and uh, uh, Ryan Rico will be our punter. And so uh, those guys have had a great camp and and um, I've been really pleased with him. I think Rico's got a strong leg. He's strong. He's big, tall, athletic, strong leg. And so uh, for us, it's, it's being able to, you know, flip the field for us on, on the punt part of things. And, and, and I think he can give us that. I think he has a power leg. And we, we know Jake already. We just, uh, from what I've seen, there's a lot of consistency in, in, in what we're getting from the holder and the snaps. And so I think that will help us um, try to find our groove when it comes to place kicking as well. Okay, I'm going to give uh, – let's go Norma for the last question, then we have Max Philly coming. So uh, sort of not focusing on what's going on in practice right now, how have LDS obligations changed during the pandemic and how will they continue to change or be different during the season? You mean like in callings or the church me
Yeah, well, I think the church meetings are a little bit different now. Um, you know, I've been I'm in the been a student ward bishopric, so uh, I think we had you know we've had our our, our wards. Of, we've been we've been going to church, and it's just not the the full um, sacrament meeting, but it's a quicker one and doing the sacrament and just all cleaning the 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 pulpit when speakers a different speaker comes up and cleaning the whole church church meeting room. So that's kind of been the the deal everywhere. I think the only place you don't have to do that is at home. So, you know, we're, even here at the office, whenever we're done with meetings and we're done with the room, we, we pretty much uh, clean it all out before we, we exit. That's what we do in the weight room and everywhere else. So I think church is the same way. I don't know if that's what you're asking about, Nora, but that's, you know, I think church, uh, I think the guys have responsibilities and I want them to go out and still have their, you know, the church has kind of shifted a little bit in the way they're doing meetings and stuff like that. And so I think, uh, you know, for us, it's just I want them to keep keep uh, practicing their religion, and be comfortable with it here. Yeah, it was like sort of if they're still going to firesides, or I know when you guys travel, sometimes uh, if it was on a Sunday, you try to find a, a church. Mm -hmm. um, so if there was going to be any differences with that? No, I've, we've done some Zoom firesides, and I think uh, you know that, that that's a little different, it makes it easier. But uh, I mean, we're always open to to. to do what we can to help people and share our, share our, our message and our testimonies with ever, with others. So that's a big part of what we want to do. We want to we want to lead through service. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, guys, stay safe. Thank you.